All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Dave Anderson here. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Dave and. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Uh, good evening, everybody. Dave Anderson here, checking in uh, with you all. Uh, great to be back here with the uh, Champion Motorsports iRacing GT3 Sprint Series. Uh, we find ourselves at Magna Cours uh, International Circuit in Nevers, France. Uh, probably butchering a little bit of that with my uh, Texan Texican <laughs> accent, which is uh, far from uh, from French here. Uh, but uh, just getting ready uh, to get started tonight. We've got just a few minutes left of uh, open practice, about four minutes left actually, uh, to be exact. And then uh, I'll be joined by Ryan Thompson. Uh, my counterpart and sidekick here, and uh, the two of us will uh, bring you all a 60-minute race. We'll he be here for qualifying as well for the, um, it really what is going to be an exciting race. Uh, really, really looking forward to this one, and uh, we're getting kind of into the midway point of the season here. We've got some nice points battles uh, shaping up. Uh, this will be our uh, fourth race of the season um, you know, so we're reaching just about that halfway point. Um, I believe we've got a total of about 10 race schedule and I'll just validate that real quick. So we were at spa, red bull ring, twin ring, Motigi, and then tonight we're race four. Um, and it looks like there are, uh, total of 10 rounds but i know one of those is a sprint format at watkins Glen, so basically a nine week season here uh and we're starting to see things really shape up uh we've got another strong field here tonight it looks like uh 32 drivers at the moment uh, on the server and uh you know just seeing the, the beautiful sights of this brand new track and i racing we'll get with the cars here as they start uh qualifying and get ready to get out on track for uh uh setting the grid in this race but before we do that and before i'm joined by ryan uh what i will do uh to get us started tonight is talk just a little bit about what we're seeing in the uh two gt3 uh, class standings of course in this series we have a pro class uh which are all of the drivers that are um, anything other than a you know, below a 200 number car so um, those are going to be the drivers that have elected into the pro division the idea is they're they're a little bit more skilled um you know from a uh, pace perspective doesn't always uh it's not always just about pace um but that's our pro designation and then we also have a pro am category those will be all of the drivers that you'll see us covering tonight with 200 numbers um and so the, sort of a race within a race um so taking a look uh just talking a little bit here uh, about the standings coming into tonight um, we've had uh, two wins in a row in the pro class by Miguel Colon, who is a uh, uh, defending champion of a uh, CMS GT3 series in the Porsche Cup series last year with iRacing Team Endurance Series uh, support. And uh, he has won two in a row uh, at Red Bull Ring and Motegi. Uh, so he has absolutely cemented himself as the, the man to beat in his Lamborghini. Uh, he is chased uh, by Michael Parker, who has had two really strong uh, finishes of his own, including two podiums, and finds himself only six uh, points back, and actually in a tie with Rafael Sosa. So those are our top three. Uh, Chris Brunnemer, uh, who won uh, opening uh, week at Spa, uh, so he's the other winner uh, besides the two Miguel Colon wins, comes in in fourth place tonight. And then Claude Belval is in fifth place. And then we have battles just all throughout the field. There are 25 drivers that have uh, logged uh, laps in the Pro Series. And uh, tonight should be another fantastic race. If we look over to the GT3 AM Series, uh, we've got uh, Steven Yanni uh, leading the points, uh, coming off of a really exciting and uh, great win at uh, Twin Ring Teggy. Uh, we have uh, Juan Martinez. He has been up front every week, uh, including a win at Spa. Uh, Nick Kuhn is in third place. Uh, all of these drivers separated by uh, less than 10 points. Shane Norton in fourth and Tyler Pinheiro, uh, who has overcome just a terrible start at Spa where he was the pole sitter 
overall in the race and then crashed out uh, into a rouge uh, on the first lap. Uh, had zero points, but has come back with two really strong finishes uh, to be in that tie for fourth place and then Ernesto Diaz in fifth place. So we've got just some really great uh, points battles uh, shaping up here and uh, excited to... Uh, to bring this to you uh, tonight. So the drivers have just gotten out for qualifying and uh, let's get on uh, with Miguel Colon. So that's the uh, first driver we talked about tonight, the leader in overall points. And uh, we'll take a ride here with him uh, from outside the car in his beautiful uh, Lamborghini GT3 car as he is on an outlap right now like most other drivers. So we will... Uh, Get a time lap with Miguel, see what he's able to do, and then we'll kind of start to look at so, how some of the uh, uh, positions are shaping up. And I think Ryan Thompson might be back. I hear his uh, friendly kitty cat a little bit in the background. You all yeah. probably can't hear it. Hey, Ryan, good evening. The official mascot. Uh, yeah. Hi, David. <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, setting things up, and, uh, you know, we got to have our third member of the team here, right? Keep us, Absolutely. Keep, keep you and I uh, honest in company throughout the night. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, excited to be back. I know we were off last week and, uh, you know, uh, don't know how, mu how much we were missed, but uh, I know I was excited to get back here tonight. Yeah, same here. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is where it's at for me. This driving action has been so exciting these, these past weeks. It really has, as we watch Miguel Colon right now going uh, through that first set of corners. He got really loose there. Uh, such quick hands Miguel has, which is part of what makes him so quick. So quick, but you can tell he's really pushing. Uh, Got to take a take a ride along with him, and I'll I'll orientate everyone to the track here. He's kind of in sector one now. You come down to a really really tight right hander here. Got to get all the way down to first gear. You can use a lot of curb on the inside. And this is where you start to work your way back through what I call the stadium section of the uh, of the circuit here. Um, lots of great views and sight lines for fans. Uh, you can really see the stands there on your right. You kind of make your way around here. You've got more stands, you know, kind of all the way around this sort of, and, and as Miguel gets really loose again, has to get out of the throttle, that's certainly going to hurt his time. And then you make your way down into in really to the sector three section of the track here. Really important straightaway here that I think is going to hurt Miguel uh, after that bobble that he had. And lots of little chicanes and S's that tie this track together. Critical right-hander here as you move around uh, into turn 14. And long straightaway that sets up the last couple, two or three corners of the track before you come back onto the, to the front stretch. So we're starting to see some times come in. And uh, we're going to stay with Miguel through this lap here. Really tight chicane at the end. You can take a lot of curb, and then you make your way all the way back through this front stretch and, and pit area. And as I predicted, that lap was not one that Miguel's going to be happy with. Uh, 38, 5, 6, 4. That's got him uh, well down the, uh, uh, the pack right now. Uh, but we will. Let's... Uh, Let's move along and look at some of the guys that are out front right now. We've got a newcomer out front, another Lamborghini. This is Christian Youngwall. Uh, Ryan, I uh, don't know that I know Christian. Uh, has he raced with us uh, before this week? or uh, Not in this series, uh, and not that I have seen. So, uh, he, yeah, I think he's new to us. Yeah, well, great to see. Uh, I mean, he's certainly kind of coming in here, bursting on the, on the scenes. Obviously a very talented driver. He's got a 4.3 KI rating. Uh, and he's out here. He's already got a lap on the board, the provisional pole sitter right now with a 38.787. Uh, and I know from, from coming in a little bit in practice last night, that's that's a quick lap right there. We did. I think it's going to take uh, something in the 37s, though, to get the pole. I just have a feeling. Yeah, absolutely. We're already seeing some times uh, getting down to that range. And this, uh, you know, Magni Coors, uh, absolutely iconic circuit. Used to be on the F1 calendar. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And just, uh, yeah, some really, really incredible corners here that you don't really see anywhere else. Yeah, and it looks like, just as we say that, that he actually has pulled a 37 uh, on that lap time. And, uh, and he's happy with that. It looks like he's going to get on out of the car. 
So we'll get with Chris Hudson here. Looks like Chris is in a new paint scheme. You want to tell us a little bit about this, Ryan? Uh, yeah, we uh, we had some work done with uh, a, a painter that we've worked with before called Splash and Go, and they did some really excellent work for us again here. And uh, every member of the team has a different uh, Mopar color for our car. That's fantastic. So yeah, everybody's got the same sort of base design, but uh, different base color, if you will. Uh, which is fantastic. Uh, looks like Chris about to come to the line here for a lap, setting in second place right now. But he pulls in a 37.899, so that's really quick. He's happy with that lap. He's going to jump on out. And uh, looks like we've got Tim Collier here in the pits. Looks like he drove into the pits. So let's take a look at some of the cars that are still out. We've got uh, about four minutes left, so still plenty of time to get a lap in. This is David Nelson. Uh, David, a uh, one of the AM drivers uh, in a Lamborghini. Dave running in our Imtech car for the uh, CMS Racing, uh, CMSRacing.com Endurance Series with the Majors Championship. Really have been very impressed with Dave. Uh, and it's great to see him kind of join up in the Wednesday League. I think this may be his first race of the season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and uh, shout out to uh, Dave from the Twitch chat. Absolutely. Is he on already? I need to pull the tw Twitch chat up myself here, so Let's see some of these comments. we can chat it up with these guys right absolutely like dave comes around and uh he's not going to be too happy with that a 40 point e it looks like for dave so he's got some work to do but he's out here that's what matters you know you're out here you're ready to have some fun and uh that's what we uh that's what it's all about right and that's the nice thing about these races is that everybody has somebody to race with uh, which is fantastic, and it does look like, uh, for now, uh, my goodness, uh, I, th I said it would take a 37 to be on the pole, and just as I say that, uh, I believe we were not covering it, but Christian Youngwall pulled a 36-6, I believe, yep, which is just beyond, yeah, just beyond fast, so that is just phenomenal. And we've done some things this season to really, you know, try to make it as friendly to the racers as possible. Uh, so, you know, with the Pro-Am split, everybody's uh, fighting for the same points. So it, even if you're not, uh, you, you know, say you're a pro driver and you're not having the best week, you can still mix it up with the Am drivers and score as many points as you can mm -hmm. or, or vice versa. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a drop race this season, so you don't have to make all the races to still be in contention for the points. And, uh, you know, just a few quality of life things like that. Yeah, that's great, right? We've got Jose Dolio, uh, Jose in the uh, high up in the points, uh, in the in the points battle. I talked about him a little bit while the driver's meeting was happening in the BMW. Looks like he's coming around for one more lap here, currently sitting uh, just outside the top ten. See if he can move up into the top 10 as we finish up qualifying. Doesn't look like he went any better. Uh, Scott Kennedy is still out on the track. Scott in 30th position right now. Does not have a timed lap. This is that Dog Bear racing team with the Ferraris. Uh, Scott and uh, DJ Alessandri, the only two drivers still out on the track as we've got about 20 minutes to the timer. We're going to stay with Scott here and see as he's coming just around these last couple of corners. Using a lot of curb. Let's see if he can move up a little bit wide there on the exit. And he's not even going to finish that lap. He abandoned it. Uh, must have gotten an incident there. And so that brings us to the last car on the track. Everyone else is happy or or done. And uh, and, <laughs> and right as I say that, DJ Alessandri's done as well. So we're gridding up here tonight now. Uh, should be a really, really fun race. And... Uh, Excited about this one. I, you know, Ryan, I can't help but think, though, you know, guys are coming off 24 hours of Daytona. We've got, um, you know, some folks that uh, probably had mixed results from that, if you think about it. And, uh, you know, we, 
I just have a feeling we might be, you know, new track, it's brand new in iRacing. Uh, might be in for a little bit more of a rough and tumble night uh, than usual. It's kind of what I'm, I've got a gut feeling on. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> but a lot of track here, and uh, it's new, it's challenging. The, the circuit is very technical in nature, and... Um, I think guys are going to have a handful of steering wheel here. Oh, still waiting on Christian Youngwall to join the uh, grid here. See his car. First couple of cars pop up. Uh, get us started here. We'll do a full pace lap around this uh, beautiful circuit. And there, buddy, kind of getting out here now. Isn't that a nice looking grid? Yes, it is. Very much so. So a total of 35 cars here tonight, Ryan. And I was just talking about, uh, you know, how everybody's coming off Daytona. There was cars with mixed results probably there. Uh, some guys did well. Some guys didn't. Uh, I think everybody probably uh, wanting to get out here and, uh, and race tonight. Probably itching to race. This is probably the first race for a lot of guys after Daytona. And uh, with a new track... Uh, it's a difficult, challenging track. It's new to a lot of these drivers, being that it's new in iRacing. I have a feeling we might be in for a little bit of excitement, and maybe a, maybe a little bit of a bit of rough rough and tumble uh, tonight. Uh, it's kind of what I'm uh, have the gut feeling on. Yeah, ho hopefully everybody will manage to keep their elbows in. Yeah, sure, hope so. I think that they need, you know, I think that the the drivers that will focus on the track are the ones that are going to do well uh, because this track is really a you need to race it and it alone it is so technical there's so many different apexes and lines uh, that you've got to kind of get right and uh, takes a lot of concentration here it's a busy lap it's a you don't get much of a break here you know yeah and a couple of the corners the proper line will absolutely bite you if you are just a hair off it's not that you're just going to be slower you will be going around you'll be going into the wall uh the the second you lose that concentration absolutely you can see uh christian Youngwall, who uh on the pole tonight got down uh, around a 36 6 i believe was his lap time it's just phenomenal we've got miguel cologne our points leader on the outside row Michael Parker in third place. That's a trio of Lamborghinis. And then uh, DJ Alessandri, uh, or Alessandrini, um, who we covered at the end, and I had made a mis mistake. He did actually get a lap in as in fourth. Chris Hudson in fifth to start. Um, our highest uh, ranked amateur tonight is eighth on the grid uh, from Pro-Am. That's Tyler Pinheiro. Josh Thompson right behind him and uh, 35 cars should be uh, should be exciting. Oh yeah, we have some very fast Lamborghinis up front. Uh, uh, DJ Alessandrini uh, being a brand new sign up about uh, half an hour before practice started. Tonight. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and right up at the top of the field, you know. Oh, yeah, we, didn't you know, waste any time. You know, and the other thing that's interesting here too, Ryan, is I see a couple of drivers in the back of the field here like Paul Darling an absolute pro level driver in iRacing award winning driver uh, Chris Brunimer who is a, a race winner earlier this year those guys are back in 30th and 31st place um, so that's going to be interesting to see some of those guys who just didn't get a clean lap uh, come up through the field absolutely uh, Brett Stevens all the way back in 23rd position that's another really quick driver uh, this, is, this is not a track I would pick for a last to first challenge. No, I think that's gonna you know normally if you if you'd have had a driver like Paul Darling up front, 
I would have had him maybe pinned to win a race like this, but I think that's an, a tall order to come from, from behind here. As we get going here, we're getting going. A little bit of a block move by the BMW down on the inside. They head down into turn one. And Young Wall is killed. Oh, We've already got a car there. off in the background. James Gong up. Uh, yeah. Like James Gong. We'll have to go back here and see if we can see that here in just a second. But Brunnerberg got away. He got away. Alessandrini moved into third. Michael Parker in fourth. Nice and getting getting single file there. Let's go back in the field a little bit. Here's Jose Delio in the BMW. Everybody's kind of cooperating here so far, Ryan. Getting single file after that first corner. Yep, it's looking real good. Miguel Colon now under a lot of pressure from DJ Allison. Johnny, uh, I'm going to butcher his name. We'll just say DJ. <laughs> uh, Alessandrini. What is that, Italian? That would be my guess, but yeah. I'm not sure. Everybody making their way through this first lap. Here they go. They'll begin lap two here. We are underway. Oh, Larry Ford uh, just had an incident in the final chicane. Oh, he sure did. I'm on it here now. Let's watch what happened. Here's Larry. He's coming through the final chicane. Gets some grass. Oh, and gets tagged by the Can-Am car. Straightened him out. Not good there. Uh, looks like Larry continuing on here. Going to be interesting to see him and uh, if the Can-Am Lamborghini there have damage. It doesn't look like it. Larry is slow, though. Slow and offline and letting a lot of cars by. Yeah, he's definitely got some sort of trouble here, Ryan. Oh, no. Just got uh, taken out. Yeah. Oh, no. Not good. Let's go back and watch this. What happens here? Oh, it's a, it's a, a hit the... The Can-Am cars hit from behind, and these two cars are victims in it. Yep. Yep. And Tim Collier just uh, having to break a little bit early on the inside there, caught out uh, the car behind. Yeah, and unfortunately, it looks like uh, Larry Ford is in the pits. Um, going to see if we see Larry. Yeah, unfortunately, the he's beat up. Uh, so, boy, it went from bad to worse there for Larry, unfortunately. And uh, that's disappointing. It looks like Tim took a pretty hard lick there, too. Yeah, let's take a look at... Yeah, he sure did. Here's Tim's car. Looks like there's a little bit of damage on the front end of this car, Ryan. Let's take a look at the rear of this car. Tim having a hard time here. He oh, got another car off up it. Tim's coming into the pits. He's coming in, yep. Yeah, Tim coming into the pits. There's, we've got two or three cars in the pits here already. Uh, June Martinez uh, looks like he had a self spin here. Yeah, let me get to. So we're already seeing some uh, the, the track take its first victims here. Right. So it looks like uh, Jen Martinez is moving again. Let's see if we can see where maybe he had his issue. There was a car behind him off there. It looked like it may not have been Jen, but someone else there from at least what I'm seeing. Yeah, that was a separate incident there. Yeah, uh, John Martinez is uh, going to have a lot of work cut out for him. This is a driver who is far up in the points in the Pro-Am class, but finds himself in 30th position right now. 
Um, so that is, he's really put himself in a hole. Meanwhile, back up front, uh, this is the, probably the best battle of the front runners right here is DJ and uh, Miguel Colon uh, want to get on board and uh, watch these two chase each other around the track here for a second. Look how smooth the driving is here uh, from DJ. Like its own rails. Yeah, just nice and quiet in that uh, BMW. And he is the only BMW in the top six right now. Uh, and really the only only BMW in the top ten. We, he's surrounded by Lamborghinis and a couple of Ferraris. Uh, but he's certainly giving... Uh, Miguel Colon, all he can handle here. And I think what this is doing is allowing Christian Youngwall to get out a little bit further. Definitely. Yeah, he's all over the back bumper, so they're going to be driving. Uh, Miguel's going to be driving in his mirrors here and definitely compromising his line. Mm -hmm. He sure is. Meanwhile, you know, we talked about this driver, Paul Darling, in the Ferrari here. Started back in 30th to 31st place, I believe. Already moved inside the top 20. <laughs> wow. So we may have to go back on what we said there. Paul Darling, uh, a uh, champion here at CMS. Also a uh, just a phenomenal story with Paul. Uh, he's been a member here of our community a long time. Don't think he has raced in one of these Wednesday night races in a while. So it was really great to see him here on practice last night and in the race. Paul, uh, notably uh, the winner of one of the large eSports contests on iRacing that was sponsored by Sports Car Club of America or SCCA. And uh, races uh, now, I believe, uh, with uh, one, of the, one of the better uh, eSports teams, uh, Satellite Racing. And so I know we'll see Paul and David Williams and some of those guys in our uh, iRacing Team Endurance Series in March. So uh, just great to see him out here in their familiar colors and uh, uh, the red, white, and blue that they, they wear so well. And uh, I like it. Yeah, it's, uh, I would love to be, you know, love to see that uh, sort of sweetheart story of a if not a last to first, uh, somebody like Paul working his way through the field and picking up a lot of points. Absolutely. And uh, but he's he's you know the further he's gotten up here, he's you know he's now hitting some guys like Joshua Burke just in front of him here in the Audi, James Gong. They're going to be a little harder to get around uh, as he does that. Uh, riding here now with. Uh, Josh, uh, or actually John Thompson, my apologies. Uh, John is the leader in the Pro-Am class right now. And uh, off to a little bit of a uh, space lead. He's got about a six, seven second lead on Steven Yanni, uh, who's in second place. Here's Steven. We'll take a look at him in the Lamborghini. Steven won the race last week at uh, Twin Ring uh, Motegi. I was not able to be here for that one, Ryan, but uh, I'm sure you had an opportunity to see that. Yes, I did, and... Uh that was another, of course, very good one. Yeah, another another track that, uh, you know, is uh, new probably to a lot of these drivers. Don't get to, to drive on it, quite, you know, too much. Yep, and you always get you always get the, the odd grumble like, ah, we don't know this track, I don't want to race here. And then uh, it turns out to be one of the best tracks that... Uh, that we've run on. Yeah, it really does. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Christian Youngwall is checked out on this thing already. He was the fastest driver, and uh, he's stretched out about a two-second lead here now in the race. He certainly is uh, backing up uh, his uh, qualifying. Got out, got out in front of... Uh, Miguel Colon and kind of off to the races. And Miguel still dealing with uh, just a slew of drivers behind him. Uh, a couple of them that are really dicing it up here uh, is uh, are Chris Hudson, Michael Parker, Drew Lidke. Uh, so we've got some guys. Uh, here's Chris Hudson, who we talked a little bit about in qualifying. He's given chase to Michael Parker just ahead of him. 
And then you go back about four seconds before you pick up Drew Lidke. So it's this, this top five with uh, Chris being the last one here in the group are kind of the front runners that are threatening to separate themselves from the pack here, Ryan. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Miguel was uh, active on our, our uh, Discord text chat before the race. He's on uh, child care duty tonight, so he's got his daughter set up in a playpen right next to his sim rig. <laughs> so his heart, re heart rate is probably really going as <laughs> yeah. he uh, tries to hold off uh, DJ Alessandrini and, uh, and keep his daughter happy and drive fast at the same time. That takes a <laughs> lot of talent. <laughs> Definitely. Riding along here with Chris Hudson. Chris is just such a pro. Love watching him race. And Chris has really, you know, uh, really just adopted motorsports, not just from a sim racing perspective, but does a lot of real world racing in his own car. Uh, goes out to VIR. He's been to Road Atlanta, a few other places. And uh, it's great to see that, you know, someone who started doing a lot of this at a really young age, getting to experience it on multiple different, different facet levels. Yeah, it's so great, and uh, Chris couldn't be a nicer guy. He's one of uh, one of my teammates, and just have a ton of respect and adoration for him. Yeah, I absolutely do too. And uh, he's actually teammates with Michael Parker. He's Chris. A uh, lot of, like a lot of these drivers, they're members of multiple teams. Uh, Chris uh, races for the Can-Am team primarily, I would say, with yourself, Ryan, and some others, but uh, also as a member of the uh, Champion Motorsports uh, Pro Team. So uh, he and Michael Parker, who you see him giving chase to just ahead, are both members of that pro team. They race together, and uh, tonight they get the opportunity to race against each other a little bit. Oh, and they have been dusting it up in this Wednesday night league for a long time. Yeah, and, they have. Uh, they really have. They, they know how to run door to door, side by side, lap after lap. Yeah, they do. Unfortunately, I'm seeing two cars out of the race already. It looks like uh, uh, one Martinez, who you talked about earlier with a spin, and unfortunately Pierre Robitaille out of the race as well. Not sure what happened to Pierre. Uh, we'll have to go back and see if we can find out a little bit more about that later. Uh, but unfortunately, Pierre out of the race. Tim Collier, however, uh, is back on the track. So you can see Tim here in the BMW uh, Can-Am car. Uh, but unfortunately, finds himself back in 30th place after he and Larry Ford uh, uh, had some issues. Leonard Burke, this is another driver who has been on the pits uh, for a fast repair already. Uh, everybody does get a fat one fast repair in this series. Keep me honest on that, Ryan, but I believe that's the case. Yep, that's right. Uh, but Leonard Burke has just come out on an outlap. Um, we've also got, uh, I believe, Scott Kennedy on an outlap already. Uh, so these are some drivers that have had issues already. Here's Scott uh, trying to recover. These are guys that had some issues. This is that Dog Bear Racing Team. And uh, like we talked about it, you know, this is a track that... Uh, you got to really, really have a high level of respect for this thing here tonight. Yep, definitely. It's just so, you know, it, it's not overly difficult to, to learn this track, but it is extremely difficult, I would think, to master it. Yeah, it's a driver's track. You really, like you say, it's not too difficult to learn. There aren't that many corners, but uh, the ones that are there, some of them are on a real, um, like a really fine line between, uh, you know, fast and in the wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, the passing opportunities, they're, they're there, but you, you've got to work for them a little bit. Yeah, you absolutely do. Really, the best battle on the track continues to be this battle right here up front of uh, DJ Alessandrini uh, giving chase to Miguel Colon. And you can really see Miguel pushing. 
He's got the baby in one hand by now. <laughs> oh, and he's gonna he's <laughs> under pressure here going into one. DJ's had enough of this. Wow. Coming around the last corner, Miguel got two wheels in the grass. Probably had to lift the throttle a little bit, and now DJ is all over him. And uh, I think DJ is going to be in position here, going down this straightaway as they make this right hander. He's not going to. He's not going to give Miguel an inch here. I don't think. Miguel's going to have to give up the fight. There it is. There's the, there's the pass in that that battle. It looks like Miguel looking briefly to try to do a crossover. Come back at him. That's, well, that's what I mean about this track. It is possible to get around, but do, for two drivers that are similar in pace, you've got to work for it. Right, and I mean, these and are the guys... Did. Yeah, absolutely, and these are the guys that are just at the top of their game uh, with us here. You know, higher I higher rating drivers. They're, they're pros for a reason. Uh, you know, DJ uh, sporting about a 6,200 6, I rating. Miguel with a 3,500, but you know a lot of these guys. There's, you know, the I rating only tells part of the story. You know, even though that's 3,000 I rating point difference between these two drivers, Miguel races. I know, I know, really almost exclusively in league events, and I uh, don't have not had the opportunity to really get to know uh, DJ too well yet. But um, looking forward to doing that. Be interesting to see now that he's clear of Miguel. Can he gain a little? Look, Miguel loose again there. He saw that coming off the that final corner, really pushing here. But I think he's he's uh, pushing so hard that uh, he's going to start to lose touch with DJ. I'm afraid. Yeah, and uh, the tire wear will definitely be a factor. Uh, if, you, if you're going to push that hard, that uh, you know your front rate is going to go down pretty quickly. Definitely will start, start to lose time. So we'll have to give some uh, we'll have to give some uh, attention to uh, if DJ is able to start uh, cutting into that lead of uh, Christian Youngwall. Right now it's about 3.6 seconds, so uh, that's you know quite a tall order at this pointy end where some of these guys race for him to do that. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm telling you, here comes Paul Darling, 14th place already. So he has moved up. I uh, don't have the exact number of positions, but it's at least 15, 15, 20 positions now that this driver has moved up. And I'm looking at his lap times as well. Uh, one of the fastest drivers on the track, certainly. Um, yep. That would put him in the top four, I think. Mm hmm. got a great spec map on this far ferrari it really pops out you can see here in the chase view he's got kind of a chrome look on this thing satellite racing uh, logo there on the back yeah it's a gorgeous livery yeah it really is You can see just how much these cars have to attack those uh, inside curbs and pretty much get launched every lap. Mm -hmm. Especially this going through uh, some of these uh, final corners on the track. You know, Paul uh, coming through there now using just so much. It's just, you know, it's got to be just jarring on the driver in many respects. Yeah, we're not getting the uh, you know the spine compression that you would get in real life, but uh, you know, good uh, strong director of wheel, you're going to feel that. Absolutely, all all the way up to 14th position right now. But you know, even all the way up to 14th position, he's 28 seconds back of the leader. Uh, but you know, I you know I mentioned it earlier, and uh, I'm going to come right back to it here. DJ Alessandrini has already taken uh, more than a half second out of that lead of Christian Youngwall. So I have a feeling that uh, if this continues to go the way we're seeing it right now, we are going to have a... He was almost a full second faster that last lap than Youngwall. Uh, we're going to see uh, him claw him in here, I have a feeling. Yeah, we're just a, just over a third of the way through this race, so there is plenty of time for a chase down. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, I think a couple, two or three more laps like this, and we may see him up there on him. Let's do a uh, little bit of rundown of the standings for the Pro-Am class, though, right now. I think that's just super important to focus on as well. Uh, out front remains uh, in the Ferrari here, John Thompson. Uh, Ryan, another driver that, unfortunately, I have to say I don't know real well. Uh, I love seeing all these new names, though. That's not a bad thing. Uh, that means that, that we're growing and we've got uh, new guys coming in and... Uh, I just have not had the experience personally to run with John a lot. Don't know if you've got any any data on him, but holding a really fine wheel here. Oh yeah, uh, he's uh, so yeah, he's relatively new with us, but he's been uh, with us for the whole season so far and has done some very consistent results in the last three races. That has uh, you know kept him right firmly in the the top half of the field. Yeah, and let's take a look at that. Actually, he is. Uh, Leading tonight, I wanted to see if I could see where he was in the points. You may be able to find that. Uh, yeah, he's uh, actually 19th in the points. He had uh, two two top 10s, 10th uh, place, and then 13th at uh, Motegi. Wow. And so this is, uh, he's he's uh, kind of just been under the radar, if you will. Sounds like some solid results, but uh, tonight finds himself out front here. Yeah, he's flying. He really is. So he either got a lot of practice in this week. His lap times are fantastic too, especially in the pro am category. He ran a uh, 38 uh, 414 is his best lap, and hasn't had much of a fall off. Super consistent. Uh, 38 38 6 38 8. Uh, and you have to go back. He's in seventh position overall, first in the subclass. You have to go all the way back to 12th overall, which is Ernesto Diaz here. Uh, car number 251, another Ferrari. Uh, Ernesto in second place right now uh, yeah. in this category. Yep, and Ernesto was another one that uh, had a 16th, a 10th, and a 26th place finish the last three races. So he's uh, punching above his, his weight class tonight as well. Absolutely. So it's great to see two guys here, uh, and you know Ernesto in quite a bit of a battle here. Great to see these two guys, uh, and and just as we talked about it, Ernesto now under pressure from Paul Darling <laughs> behind him. Paul Darling now threatening to get into the top ten in this thing. Uh, so, but you know they're going to get harder and harder to pass. I, even though Paul's moving up positions, his gap to the leader uh, still about 28 seconds. You can see Paul just behind Ernesto here, uh, two cars back. It's uh, it, which you know it just got around Tyler Pinheiro. Paul did, uh, but Tyler Pinheiro currently, as they're side by side here in the Audi, is that third place car. And you know, I know Tyler now. Unfor unfortunately, it's not for the right reasons, but I know him uh, for setting the pole overall in the race at Spa, and it all went to hell in a handbasket on him uh, going up a Rouge for the first time, and he had a DNF really early in that race. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a tough one to watch. That was he and Miguel Colon both, but both of them have battled back, and I believe uh, Tyler has, even after scoring zero points at Spa, has put himself back into the top ten points, if I'm not mistaken. He has. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the one drop race rule in effect, so that's already taken into account. Got uh, it, so, got it. So that's effectively his drop race at the moment, and it will probably remain so because the zero points is the same as not showing up right and he's not likely to uh not likely to have another uh issue there taking a look saw a little bit of uh, change in the standings but it was not what i thought it was i thought for a moment there was something that had happened out front but uh still got christian uh young wall out front uh and he's kind of stabilized that gap working through some lap traffic now DJ Alessandrini still in second, Miguel Colon in third. Yeah, we'll see if the traffic does, uh, you know, shake things up or allow that gap to, to grow or shrink. Yep, here's Liam Park. A uh, little bit of a variation to that Can-Am paint scheme. He's got some green and white on this car. Yep, that's the sublime Mopar color. I really love it. Uh, Liam in uh, 18th. This is a solid run uh, for Liam. He is in 
just just within the top ten, about seventh position in class, ahead of last week's winner, Stephen Yanni. That's Stephen here right behind him. Uh, both of them are ahead of Brett Stevens. Brett Stevens, a driver, a pro driver. A uh, little surprised Brett's not further up. Uh, you know, he has been... Uh, where's Brett in the points, uh, Ryan, in the pro class? Top five? Uh, he's up there. Uh, stand by. Yeah. Um, I'm showing him in ninth. Ninth, okay. This is the Longhorn Racing Team. We talked quite a bit about the Longhorn guys. Uh, just a great group of guys. A lot of veterans at CMS. Brett has been kind of the uh, standout of this team so far. Unfortunately, we saw Larry Ford, who's a member of that team earlier tonight, uh, have some trouble. And uh, and uh, Larry's still running, but 13 laps down. The other driver in that team is Mike Tyler. This is Mike Tyler in the Lamborghini. I saw Mike get lapped just a moment ago by uh, the leaders. This is Chris Hudson going around him now. Uh, Mike looks to be having a little bit of a hard time with the track tonight. He ran a 44 flat last time, so might be struggling. Uh, you know, Mike is uh, quite the professional. He's an executive for Net, uh, NetApp in the real world. Lives out in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, so practice time is a premium for Mike. Um, but uh, nobody, nobody more excited to be out here than Mike, that's for sure. Definitely. Oh, and just as I said that, I jinxed him. Uh, lazy spin, he's around. Oh, no. <laughs> and he's in a bad spot here. What is he going to do? <laughs> he's going to have to back up. Let's watch this from up top. Stay tight, Mike. Stay tight. There you go. But, boy, he's losing all sorts of time here. What a terrible place for him to go around. Let's go back and watch that, Ryan. Here it is. That is comes, not a part of the track you want to be perpendicular yeah, to. Yeah, no, it's not. He comes around here. Let's see what happens. Gets a lot of curb. The car jumps. He gets in the grass. Around it goes on him, and he just has to sit there and do about a five-point turn yeah. around after the whole field goes by. Uh, so sorry about that, Mike. We jinxed you. Uh, Mike, with you know, just a uh, tremendous sim racer, tons of experience, uh, somebody that uh, uh, he'll be able to laugh at that at some point. But I can tell you, he's fuming about it right now. He's mad at himself over that situation. <laughs> well, I'll bet you five i racing dollars he posts a screenshot of that after the race. <laughs> I bet you he does too. He has some <laughs> of the very best team. Uh, screenshots that he's that he shares uh for yeah, sure. He sure does yeah you know mike uh you know he does a uh he's in you know i believe kind of some of the marketing and uh design he's uh, a super creative mind for uh for netapp and uh they're really lucky to have him uh just a a brilliant executive and uh Loves motorsports, uh, for sure. Has been at it for a long time. He's, he grew up with it around his dad. And, uh, uh, you know, he's definitely has moved, uh, like like me and you, Ryan, and some of us, you know, we're not as young as we used to be. But, uh, you know, out here, I know Mike's at uh, right about the 60-year-old mark now and uh, having more fun than anybody out here, that's for sure. Although he's not real happy at the moment. Like he might have just taken a slow down there over that curb. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get off him here as, as, so to uh, not embarrass him a little bit more. And I'm going to come right back here to Paul Darling, ninth place. So this is the driver that's definitely the hard charger of this event. 21 spots up. That is just remarkable. 21 spots up. That's got to be, you know, we saw uh, Mark Johnson. Uh, Mark uh, drives a BMW for the Longhorn Racing Team and the CMS Endurance Team. Mark is not here tonight. He's probably working. Uh, but Mark uh, had a similar drive up through the field at Spa uh, where he you know, made up 20, 25 positions. And uh, Paul on a very similar run here now within the top 10. The challenge for Paul, though, is uh, he is not really gaining on the leaders. So, in fact, he's lost a little. Last time I looked, he was about 27, 28 seconds behind the leaders. Right now, I'm showing his gap to be about 30 seconds. Uh, that's, so, That's right. Um, but every 
car he passes, whether it's a pro or an am, that's just more points on the board. Absolutely, more points, and and uh, really the only thing right now that's separating from him being up there running with those two guys up front, two or three guys up front, is uh, really just a matter of uh, starting position, track position. Yep, yep. Let's go on board with Paul, ride around with him a little bit, see what he's doing so right. We, we should all go to school here and watch him hit his apexes and just kind of watch him here complete this lap. He's so smooth, he's probably, you know, like talking to the kids and doing his taxes at the same time here. <laughs> probably is. Look how he just uses everything uh, to the maximum, but it's just, you know, real minimal input on the wheel here. Getting his shifting point just right. He's got this setup dialed in on this thing. Ferrari is handling these curbs really, really well. Chasing down John Major Banks ahead of him for eighth position overall. Critical to get a good exit on this corner, which he does. I want to watch how this Ferrari takes these corners here at the end, these big bumps. Let's take a look here and see how this thing looks going over him, Ryan. Boy, he's really just hammering them. Having the bravery to, you know, to launch it over a curb, get a little bit of air time, but immediately... Uh, crank the wheel all the way over to the left. Right. Or Meanwhile, right after hitting the ground. you're right. Meanwhile, while this has happened, I don't know if this is a pit stop thing. You may be able to help me check, Ryan, but it looks like Ernesto Diaz has moved into the lead here in the Pro-Am category. So John Thompson has fallen all the way back to third position. Both Tyler Pinheiro and uh, Ernesto Diaz by him. Here's John. I don't see any issues on the car. I don't see him pitting either. Uh, I don't see him having pitted. Brett Stevens is on an outlap. David James is on an outlap. Peter Hebron's on an outlap. Those are the only cars I see having pitted so far. Yeah, nobody in the top inside the top 20 has pitted. Mark Nister in the Porsche. Uh, one of the only Porsches in the field. This is Mark here. Love this paint scheme. Uh, Mark has been on pit road, 20th position overall. Mark loves a Porsche. Man, he loves a Porsche. This guy is just a Porsche fanatic. I know that because uh, we have to we have to beg him. He's such a talented driver, Mark Nister. We have to beg him to drive anything other than a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> he runs with us. Mark runs with us on the CMS Endurance team. Uh, ran with us at the VSCA event this last weekend. Uh, and uh, drove just so well. Uh, we drove a BMW in that race, and had Mark had it his way, we would have uh, driven a Porsche, I'm sure. Tim Collier on an outlap right now. Looks like Tim's car is cleaned up after that uh, early incident, Ryan. He took his fast repair, and Tim's had a nice recovery drive. He's moved up into 23rd position here. Yeah, Tim's one that can just, uh, you know, shake off the red mist and, and keep it going. Uh, update on uh, John Thompson for you. It looks like he had a self-spin on lap 15 that cost him a good 15 seconds or so. Oh, he did. Okay. That's the reason for that. So, unfortunately, with that, he's given up the lead to Ernesto Diaz. And uh, nobody has come in up front here yet. Keeping a close eye on this. This is Christian Youngwall is going to take another lap. What do you think we're going to see most guys do here? We've got about, you know, we're a little bit past halfway in the race here. You know, is uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Is it is the, the prudent strategy to, it looks like some guys have split this thing up. And I'm assuming these guys that haven't come in are going to run it out of fuel at this point. Yeah, that seems to have evolved as the dominant strategy here. The, the pit window is really wide. You can come in anywhere from about 10, 12 minutes 
uh, in the race to about 50 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have seen a lot of drivers, uh, like you say, just running out of fuel. Um, we have a notorious fuel saver in our midst, uh, JT Tammy, who... Uh, I don't see him here tonight. I don't see him here tonight uh, either. Yeah, but but he's one that he's one that uh, can just about get a full sixty minutes out of this uh, out of that very thirsty Ford. <laughs> yeah, he can. <laughs> he definitely can. That's for sure. Christian Youngwall though has you know done nothing but stretch his lead out. He's now got about a four and a half second lead. And unless he has some sort of trouble in the pits, uh, I think he is definitely the guy to beat here, though. A um, little bit better race uh, back here in the Pro-Am category. We've now got Ernesto Diaz, who I talked about a moment ago, who we're riding with here now in this uh, red, uh, yellow, and black Ferrari. Uh, he has inherited the lead and uh looking pretty strong he uh running lap time still down in the 38s right now uh he's ahead of quite a few pro drivers including chris brunimer a couple others uh and tyler pinero here not far back you can see tyler here in this audi giving chase so this is probably the best of the two class battles right now is what we're seeing here in pro-am there is a pro car in richard mcclure and the Dog Bear Racing Ferrari just ahead of uh, Tyler. So if anything, it may be one Ferrari to another. Uh, as it looks like we've got some cars uh, hitting pit road here now. So pit road, Ryan, uh, getting active. Let's see if we could take a look here at some of the guys that are on. Ernesto Diaz, one of them. Uh, so let's see if we can pick up his pit stop. Here he is now. This is our leader in Pro-Am. Looks like he's in for cars up on Jack, so I'm assuming he's taking tires here. Is that your what you're thinking? Is that tires are free? Do you need enough fuel, or do you gain gain a few seconds by not taking tires? Yeah, we're, we're seeing a mix on on tires. I can't tell if he took tires or not. The, the jacks don't mean much. You, you always get jacked up, mm -hmm. but... So he is the first of the Pro-Am leaders to come in, uh, which means he's now given that lead back to Tyler Pinheiro here. Tyler in 12th position overall. So let's do a little bit of a rundown of the top 10 overall here in the race. We'll start... Uh, Start here with uh, Jose Dolio. Uh, boy, he put on a great show at Red Bull Ring. I think if, had we gone another couple of laps, this you know this is a driver that was going to win that race. Uh, really strong. Uh, had a great battle with Miguel Colon. Had a fantastic uh, pit stop. Uh, Jose is high in the points. I want to say he's on the podium in the points, if I'm not mistaken, and having another good run here tonight. Uh, Claude Belval, uh, Claude, uh, another driver who's been consistently up front, uh, high in the points as well, just ahead of Jose in ninth. That's them uh, racing here. So this is uh, actually, I'm, I apologize, that's not the case. That's uh, Tim Collier who they're going around. I got uh, Tim and Jose confused because their cars look a little bit. Uh, John Majorbanks, uh, don't know that I know John. Uh, any any story on John from your perspective, Ryan? It's another Lamborghini. Looks like he might be a teammate of Christian Youngwall. Their cars look pretty similar. Yeah, this is. Uh, I believe this is John's first race in our uh, in the current season. So we don't have uh, too much data on him uh, in these in these cars in these circumstances yet. Yeah, John uh, having a fantastic race tonight. Uh, just ahead of him, you can see right on track here is Paul Darling. Uh, Paul up just an unprecedented number of spots here now into seventh place. Uh, and I'm not going to rule out that Paul might not have an opportunity to get into the podium in this thing. Oh, and just as I said that, John Majorbanks is around. Let's watch what happens here, Ryan. I've gone back to it. 
look at this. Broadcaster Jinx. As soon as we start talking about some of these guys, they, you know, Mike Tyler, now John, he did a he he had a much better time of getting going around though and came straight to the pits here. Yep. And did a fantastic job of uh, you know, holding the brakes. You knew there were a couple of cars coming up behind and uh, Safe, nice safe rejoin there so he did the and and really because of that and where it happened on the track probably didn't lose more than four or five seconds uh so continuing to run up through the uh, top 10 uh drew lidke uh, we have not talked a lot about drew tonight uh but drew a phenomenal driver this is another uh, mopar can-am special yes it is <laughs> drew uh, just coming off running the 24 hours of daytona where the team had a top five finish uh he ran for the can-am motorsports and uh champion motorsports entry in this lambo uh, a little bit different paint scheme at daytona uh but just great to see him uh having a strong race here tonight and he's uh now got paul darling behind him so that's going to be an interesting battle when paul and drew get up here fifth place uh, remains chris hudson another can-am driver so we got two Can-Am drivers in the uh, in the you know uh, top five or just outside of it. Yeah, and see. Uh, Chris definitely in contention and uh, tied for sixth uh, overall in the pro standings. Absolutely, looking fantastic. I think this is my favorite of the Can-Am cars. If I'm biased, I love the color on this one. I think the blue contrasts perfectly with the black on this car and uh, i absolutely love it it's just a uh, just pops off the screen uh michael parker just ahead of him these guys have not been separated by more than just a couple of seconds the entire race but it looks like just as i say that michael parker has now right on the tail of miguel cologne so miguel cologne falling back a little bit into into michael's uh clutches here so you're looking at the uh, fourth and third place driver uh with these two about uh 10 11 seconds off the leader uh, and so then we'll move on up to DJ Alessandrini, who we talked about earlier. He's lost a little bit of time. He's down to about a five-second gap uh, behind our leader, Christian Youngwall. And uh, this man is uh, in his own world tonight. And it's a very fast world indeed. Very, very fast world. Quickly, I like to try to touch a little bit on as many drivers as I can before we uh, start covering the pit stops of some of these front runners. Uh, let's take a look at uh, David James here in the race tonight. Uh, David uh, running in 26th position overall. One lap down to the leaders. Uh, great to see David here, a really dedicated member. Uh, Peter Hebron just ahead of him in 25th position. Uh, a couple of battles of Ferraris. Um... Nick Kuhn coming out of the pits here right now. Nick uh, coming out uh, after taking his service. Uh, Nick very active with the major series. Uh, just a real uh, quality eye racer. Someone who uh, we love having here at CMS. I've really, uh, really loved having Nick uh, as part of the group. He won the uh, championship uh, in a really tight battle with Tim Collier. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, Ryan, a season or two ago, it came down to just like the last rates, last lap, last few corners, and Nick uh, barely edging out Tim Collier for the Pro-Am Championship in GT3 category. Yeah, I do remember, and uh, Nick is right up there in third overall for the AM standings this season so far. Yeah, and so tonight he is in right about 10th place in the class. Um... So having a good uh, a good run. Steven Yanni, here's Steven Yanni, who won last week in the uh, Pro-Am class. Uh, Steven currently running uh, in just outside the podium, top five. So looking really strong here. And it looks like Miguel Colon is uh, on pit road here. So Miguel Colon on pit road. I wonder if he meant to come in. He had a little bit of a bobble and just coming out of the final chicane he did and he may have just said i'm coming in let's watch him see how long he's here but that's a that's a good if he didn't intend to come in that's a good split second decision to say all right I've, 
I'm already losing this time. I may as well make my stop now. Yeah, and that looks to me like that was a fuel-only stop. So this is the first driver in the top 15 to come in. Uh, John Thompson now looks like he's coming to pit road. Ooh, gets really loose. Some of these guys need service. Here <laughs> Here's John uh, in second place, coming off the track in second place in the amp category. Really strong race by John here. Got two Johns. We talked about John Major Banks earlier. This is John Thompson. Let's see how long he's in. You can hear him holding the throttle. A fuel only stop. Paul Darling now. Uh, Paul will still have to pit. Miguel Colon is behind him. You can see Miguel uh, just behind Paul. Paul's now moved up into the top five, but he will have to take service. I'm taking a look too, Ryan, at some of the lap times in race trim. Christian Youngwall has gotten down, ran a 36.9, and his last lap was a 37.132. So he just has his foot all over the juggler of the field here tonight. Yeah, that's incredible. That's only three tenths off of his quality term. Right. Uh, but just as I look, you know, even though he's about six seconds back, DJ Alessandrini ran a 37.196. So. You know, we, you know, these guys are going to have to have both execute a pit stop. Both going to have to execute a pit stop. Yeah, that's what it might come down to. And we, you know, at Red Bull Ring, we saw that where Miguel Colon barely held off Jose Dolio because Jose uh, had such a better entry exit off pit road. And I've got some timing on that. So it looks like uh, Miguel Colon had a 26.4 second stop. That is a about fastest of the whole group. Uh, Luis Ortiz looks like has had the fastest pit stop, 26.1 seconds tonight. But m most drivers coming in around 28 to 32 seconds, you know, for their service. Uh, so that tells you that, you know, Miguel Colon, uh, Luis Ortiz have definitely just probably taken fuel-only stops. So we'll be able to track that and see kind of what sort of time DJ, Michael Parker, Chris Hudson, these guys are able to make up on Christian, if any, uh, yeah. with the pit stops. And at this point in the race, it, I would think everybody would be just taking a splash and go here. Right. Really, the only the only time gained or gained or loss is going to be how well you get on off pit road. It's a tricky entrance to pit road, too, you know, with that. There's just kind of a lot going on there. You gotta kind of yeah. come through that chicane a little, and Drew Lidke has been on pit road. Looks like Drew here. We're with him now. He's on pit road right now as we speak. A few cars on pit road. This is Drew. You can see him moving. Drew in with a 28.2 second stop. So that just reinforces that even with a splash and go, you know, someone like Miguel Colon picked up two seconds on Drew. Yeah. And I, you know, I guess that just comes down into just really kind of hitting your, hitting your stall perfectly, right? Okay, our leader is on pit road now, or coming to pit road. This is uh, Christian Youngwall. We'll watch him come in here, stay right behind him. DJ Alessandrini is on pit road with him. Here they are. And then you see right behind him is DJ. We'll watch both cars here. I'll give a report on what sort of times we see. Michael Park, it's monkey see, monkey do right now. Michael Parker is on pit road. So they are all on pit road at the moment. Christian will be the first one off. 27.5 seconds. DJ was 26.7. So not a whole lot of time gained. Michael Parker with a slow stop, a 29.1. 
and Chris Hudson with a 28.2. So you can see here, this battle here is going to heat up. This is Chris Hudson coming out right behind Michael Parker. And that's going to that's gonna help Chris pull up a little bit more on Michael and see if he can take the fight to him. Yeah, a little over, you know, about probably seven minutes of racing left here, give or take. Yeah, we still have uh, three or four drivers that have not come to pit road. Paul Darling is one of those drivers. Paul currently up to third place right now, but he will have to give a little bit back. We'll try to cover Paul when we see him hit pit road, see where he comes out. That's certainly been driver of the race, I think. Definitely. Uh, a toss-up, certainly, between him and Christian Youngwall. He's got three seconds to Miguel behind him and uh, about 11 seconds to Claude, so he's probably going to drop back, I would say, three, four spots here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he comes out anywhere near racing Chris Hudson, Michael Parker. Uh, sort of expecting we might see Paul this lap. That's why I'm on Paul at the moment here. See what he does. No, oh, he's going to go out another lap. So while he does that, we'll uh, we'll go back to. You know, here's Tyler Pinheiro. Tyler has not been on pit road either. This is our leader in pro am category. It looks like actually he may be coming to pit road possibly now. Yep, here comes Tyler Pinheiro coming in now. So we'll watch his stop. See if he's able to keep the lead. And I'm now showing the only car, Ryan, that has not pitted is Paul Darling. So not only is Paul fast, he's getting a little bit better fuel mileage than everyone else. Yeah, we'll see how long he's going to be able to stay out. All right, let's see where Tyler comes out here in relation to John Thompson. John was on pit road as well, so he's behind him. This is John. So they're coming out together. I don't expect to see any change there. This is John uh, Thompson that we're on with now on the Dog Bear Racing Team. Boy, I tell you, this is a battle all of a sudden. That's uh, Tyler just ahead of him. Actually, my apologies. That's uh, that's they're not as close as I thought they were. There's about a 10 second gap. Paul Darling is on pit road. Here he comes. Let's see what sort of stop we can expect out of Paul. Looks like a bit of a longer stop there. Let's see what yeah, your timing shows. I will. I'll let you know here as soon as I see something. Actually, I'm showing 25.2 seconds, so it was actually oh, okay. a little bit faster. Yeah, my mistake. Than some of those guys. Let's see where that now has put Paul. I'm showing him in sixth position at the moment. And... Uh, out of, out of striking distance. I think that'll be where he finishes. So that'll be about where he finishes. I, he's about 10, 15 seconds still behind Chris Hudson and Michael Parker. So with that said, let's turn our attention here. We've, you know, really briefly, Christian Youngwall, he's checked out here, has a 6.7 second lead on DJ Alessandrini. Uh, the best battles on the track right now is uh, these two drivers right here in the pro category. We've got Chris Hudson in this blue Can-Am uh, Lamborghini just behind Michael Parker. These drivers have been like this just pretty much the entire race. There is a lapped car of Nick Kuhn in between the two of them. Um, I don't know that Chris is going to have enough time and enough pace to get to Michael. Um, but you never know. I any mistake by... Uh, by Michael, you know, Ryan, it, it, he, we know Chris will drive right through any door he uh, or window he opens. Oh, and then Chris has a bobble. There's, 
broadcaster jinx again. <laughs> <laughs> That, well, that uh, corner he was at is so easy to get the rear end loose on. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, Tyler Pinheiro, our leader in uh, Pro-Am category, he has all but checked out as well. He's got an even more comfortable gap uh, over uh, uh, John Thompson. Uh, John in second and John, uh, so they were spaced out now in the, the top three in... Uh, Pro-Am class, so we ride along with John now. He's in second position overall. And then we have to go back about another eight, nine seconds. You can see Ernesto Diaz here in his Ferrari uh, coming up through the field. And that is another great looking livery. I love the color scheme on that. Really is a fantastic livery. Uh, we've got a really good race right here. This is one worth noting. This is Jose Dolio and uh, John Majorbanks racing against each other. So this is Jose you see uh, in the BMW. Just ahead of him in the Lamborghini is uh, John. This is a battle for position in the top ten. It's ninth and tenth position. Uh, Jose giving chase. Let's see if we can get in... Uh, uh, maybe get in uh, get in his cockpit a little bit, a little bit of a Giro view. This is probably our best battle within class on the track. So smooth. He's really got a good handle on this BMW. Well, he's there. As soon as we started covering this, Ryan, he is there. And, and then, of course, I jinxed him with a bot as he has a bobble. They are all bobbling off that last corner, and he's going to lose a spot as a result of that. Chris Brunimer gets around him. So this is actually a three-way battle. This is John Majorbanks here you see in ninth. Chris Brunimer now has moved into 10th. And Jose Dolio all of a sudden really struggling in 11th position. I think the tires are going away on him. This is We know he did not take tires. Yeah, it's likely. Uh, 60 minutes of, of this much punishment on those tires. Yeah, it looks like he Wouldn't. may be giving up the fight here. So, Ryan, hopefully we can talk to a few of these guys when we're done. We'll have to let them know to swing by. Will do. Uh, Christian Youngwall here, just checking in on him. About a seven-second lead over DJ Alessandrini. No pressure from behind. We've got about... He probably has a good shot... I think it getting the white flag next time by. And what you can't hear, David, is the uh, on the in race chat. Uh, DJ giving Christian Youngwall some uh, some friendly banter, asking him to get a, a slowdown on every corner from here to the end of the race, so he can catch him. <laughs> Working it every way he can. Here's DJ, <laughs> about seven seconds back, has driven a phenomenal race of his own. Best battles right here in the top 10. Chris Brunimer now right on the tail of John Majorbanks. These are the two drivers you see uh, separated by about a second and a half. This is uh, Chris in the Lamborghini chasing the Lamborghini. Lamborghini certainly uh, taking some bragging rights right now in the uh, balance of performance discussion. I'm sure some of the other cars and manufacturers aren't real happy about that. Yeah, they were so strong early on. I'm not surprised to see that. But it's always, as a driver, as you know, it's always a 
bit of a gut punch when the car you've been practicing gets uh, gets a little bit of a nerf. Yeah. So I believe we're on the last lap here. This is uh, Christian Youngwall. Really no pressure. Stick with Chris, Christian. Uh, give him the credit where credit's due. And then uh, once we see him come over the line, we're going to go straight to Tyler Pinheiro, who's our leader in GTM, and give these guys some huge uh, shout-outs. Just about three or four more corners here for Christian. You're at time, so he should take the checkered. He comes down one more time. He's got to get through. Uh... There he is. There's your winner, folks, right there. Checkered flag for Christian Youngwall. And here is Tyler Pinheiro in the uh, Audi. Tyler about halfway through the lap. Two dominating performances here, Ryan, tonight by these two drivers. Absolutely, and uh, not a bad debut performance either. Absolutely. Yeah, no, we definitely have had uh, some tremendous drives tonight. Uh, looks like Tyler will come home as the winner barring any uh, unforeseen circumstances that are bad for him in the last few corners of the race. He's making his way around now through the last chicane. And he takes the uh, checkered flag and is the winner. He will be followed by John Thompson. Here's John coming across the line in second place in Pro-Am class and then third place driver right now coming around as well is Ernesto Diaz. We'll kind of stay with some of these guys in Pro-Am. Steven Yanni here now coming to the line. Luis Ortiz, love his car, the M&M's car. We did not talk about that thing intentionally because I was getting hungry <laughs> when I saw it. And how about Liam Park? Look at Liam Park here. Solid result. For yeah, him. what a solid result for Liam. 20th position overall. Nice top 20 finish for Liam. And I don't know if I'm supposed to uh, reveal this, but uh, Liam suffering a little bit of an oven fire in his house earlier today. That uh, wow, uh, yeah, that was a, a bit of an event for him. Surprised he made it. <laughs> yeah, he was he was having doubts. Well, maybe uh, tell you what, maybe that is a uh, happy ending to a bad day uh, uh, for Liam. I hope that he didn't suffer too much. Uh, too much damage so all right well we'll go ahead and uh, start to wrap up things kind of go uh, down the field a little bit here uh, from this race in France where we have certainly enjoyed it uh, congratulations to our winners uh, Christian Youngwall uh, in the pro category and uh, Tyler Pinheiro in the uh, am category uh, running down our top uh, five in each class. We'll go through the uh, pros first. Christian Youngwall in second. DJ Alessandrini in, uh, excuse me, Christian Youngwall in first. DJ uh, Alessandrini in second. Miguel Colon with another phenomenal run to back up his two wins in a row on the podium uh, with a third place finish. Another also phenomenal run by Michael Parker in fourth place. And Chris Hudson. Uh, with what I believe is probably his best race of the year in fifth. An honorable mention, I just can't ignore it, to Paul Darling in sixth place overall, moving up, you know, uh, 28 positions or something like that. Just insane. Uh, so phenomenal run by Paul. Great run for him. Great to have Paul out here with us. If we take our uh, top five in uh, the AM category, Tyler Pinheiro, Gets redemption from his first race at Spa, where he was oh so disappointed. That'll be his drop race, but he had a strong result last week, and now he backs it up with a win here tonight. So Tyler uh, uh, going to be really, really happy. John Thompson had a phenomenal run in second place. 
We talked about John and how he was just kind of under the radar so far, but has been consistent. He had a great finish tonight in second. Third place, uh, Ernesto Diaz uh, in that M&M's car. Uh, we did not talk enough about Ernesto tonight, but sometimes those are the best finishes. When we don't talk about you, that means you're uh, out there just doing your thing and staying out of trouble and keeping your nose out of uh, out of out of uh, a bad spot. So great run to Ernesto, Stephen Yanni in fourth position. Uh, Stephen with a great run. Uh, he won last week at Motegi and uh, backed it up with us with a top five tonight. And then Luis Ortiz uh, in the uh, fifth position in pro am. We had a total of 19 cars on the lead lap first car one lap down was liam park with a top 20 and then we had it looks like uh less than i thought actually maybe about uh seven or eight cars that did not finish the race unfortunately uh, our last place finisher tonight was uh, one that got caught up very early in an issue pierre robitaille we saw the troubles that larry ford had mike tyler we saw some of his trouble those are drivers that are going to be eager to get back out there next time. So, Ryan, I don't know if we've got uh, anybody uh, we can chit-chat with, but I would sure love the opportunity uh, if we do. I see Stephen Yanni is in here, uh, Michael Parker as well, uh, and I see someone with uh, a name I don't know. They need to add their name. <laughs> De definitely. Yeah. We don't have anybody on deck that uh, is uh, ready to talk to us right now, but... Uh... But uh, definitely congratulations to uh, Tyler and Christian and all the other top finishers and everybody really for just putting on a clinic tonight of how to run this track. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm asking the unnamed, unnamed driver in the Discord uh, if he'll let us know who that is in case it's one of our winners. Uh, we'd like to, or, or podium finishers, we definitely would like to, uh, to see if we can... Uh, uh, get them in here to talk and uh you know while we're waiting on some guys uh, i'll see if i can invite a couple in here ryan we'll see if uh see if that'll work sure uh, to talk to us i'm going to pull in miguel cologne and uh i'm gonna pull in michael parker and maybe we'll see if we can't talk to these two guys uh together here i see michael is in here with us now michael and miguel is in as well gents how are you tonight uh, michael we'll start with you hopefully you can hear us uh yeah, yeah gr another uh we've got you uh yep. another great run tonight uh you had a you had a mirror full of chris hudson pretty much the entire race from what we could tell oh yeah chris was keeping me honest for sure um i kind of didn't know what to expect because i didn't attend the practice last night so i ch i just chose a setup and went with it uh, it was like a sprint setup so I was struggling in the beginning of the race with fuel. Um, Miguel and DJ definitely started to pull off. Uh, I didn't get a good start either. Like a green light happened right at the chicane for me. So, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, to have the drive you did, a fourth place finish, which is certainly going to help you in the points because you're already pretty high in the points. So just you know, really a matter of a few points behind Miguel we'll talk to here momentarily but uh to, to have that type of drive with uh what sounds like less than desirable prep michael uh, i think you've got to feel feel good about that oh for sure definitely and I, I think honestly i could have had a tight battle with miguel like we did at mategi last week if i didn't bobble on my in lap uh near the chicane i just I was concentrating on my pit strategy and <laughs> lost concentration for a split second and bobbled almost lost it so yeah, uh, yeah. That. I tell you, we saw a lot of that. We, Miguel, we saw some of that out of you, uh, you as well, I believe. Uh, and uh, it, it seemed like it got tricky there. Uh, the older the tires got for you, for you both. Uh, so, Miguel, uh, ha, you know, another uh, backed up a podium. Uh, and uh, you and Michael, I think we're going to be talking about the two of you in this championship battle uh, all year. Uh, Tell us how your race was, and and uh, and Ryan, why don't you uh, give Miguel a few a uh, few questions as he uh, gives his opening here? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Miguel. <laughs> so, do you guys can hear me? Yes, yes sir. We can. Yeah, I'm trying to speak slow, uh, low volume because my daughter is just living on the side, so I, I think that's a big <laughs> win for me today. <laughs> 
so yeah for me it was kind of tricky track you know i just bought the track yesterday i, I made the practice and then i look at the streaming you guys were doing just and i was like man that's horrible performance by me spinning and crashing in every corner uh, and today i tried to just uh, put something kind of to make my feel comfortable in the car uh, uh, there was some areas I feel like it was kind of tricky. I could push it harder, but I didn't feel the full confidence to go for it uh, without losing the car. Uh, you know, need more track time for sure. Yeah. Um, like Michael, you know, like today I didn't practice at all. Today I just basically came into to the quality, you know, because my wife is working. I have the baby daughter to race, so I put her to sleep before the race. I was like, I hope she doesn't, doesn't wake up. Uh, let me finish the race. If not, I will be driving the pit and then stopping. <laughs> 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 but I would say it was a close battle with Michael. It definitely that traffic. It, I had some seconds ahead of him. Then I got caught up with a lot of traffic. He got closer. And then when I decided to go to the pit lane, it was because I got a short curve penalty. So I was like, okay, if I let him pass me on the track, serving the penalty, then I will be behind for the pit stop. So I decided to take my time and let him catch me before I made it my pit stop so I could clear my 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 penalty for the shortcut uh, penalty. So we're slow down and I say, okay, I, we were side by side. I made the pit stop. He, he went over. Whoever take more fuel is going to go behind. So I was hoping I made the right strategy. And, Man, I had a, like point three pass in the finish line on my gas tank, so that was right dead. Well, you know, we a uh, couple of things. Uh, you know, Ryan was aware of your situation. <laughs> Ryan, if you remember, you took me through that, and we we had a laugh about that. We we talked about here he comes, uh, you know, round uh, the chicane here with a baby in one hand and a handful of steering wheel in the other. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you also, by the way, uh, had one of the faster pit stops, uh, so you got in really well to your pit stop uh, uh, into the box, so you were a man of many hats tonight, and uh, just a great drive. I tell you, you both of you guys, though, would love to hear from you both, maybe you, you first, Michael. Um, you guys have got a couple of new guys on the block here that are. I think you're going to give you a run for your money in uh, Christian and uh, DJ. Uh, wow, those guys were... Uh, something else and we and we watched that battle with dj uh and you miguel and uh uh that was a fun one that was probably the most exciting door by door action of the race so but uh you know michael tell us a little bit about how how you feel about these two newcomers and uh then would love to hear the same thing from you miguel oh uh, yeah no they're they're on pace i think christian i've seen before uh one of these races his name looks familiar i knew he was going to be quick um and dj fun fact is uh i competed with him in the uh, national solo uh, autocross championships in the Miata in 2018, so I knew him in real life. <laughs> so nice. that's yeah. that's awesome. So did you uh, is DJ someone that you brought to CMS, or did you guys meet here by coincidence? Oh, it's just coincidence. Uh, he doesn't know. Like we we met, but I'm sure he doesn't really remember me. Like we were just in the class and and in paddock and talking a little bit. Um, but he's I think he's on the East Coast, so uh, that was the only time I actually met him. Well, you'll have to send him a note, remind him of that, and say, hey, small world, right? We've been at right. uh, solo national events together, and uh, we've uh, here we are iRacing at Champion Motorsports. That's phenomenal. And for those of you that don't know, Michael is uh, quite the uh, – I know Michael personally. We've raced together. Uh, he's quite the uh, professional uh, national-level autocrosser, many trophies in national-level events with SCCA. And, Michael, we're just so proud to have you here at CMS. Uh, just such a – such a model member of uh, of what we look here for, and congratulations on your run tonight. I appreciate it. You guys, uh, again, class A um, effort with the CMS and the broadcast and the whole crew, and also just getting together all levels of skill here. Um, Miguel and DJ and Christian, for sure, is definitely going to make it interesting the rest of the season. Yeah. Ryan, you want to take us home with Miguel here a little bit, and uh, then we can uh, wrap up for the evening? Sure, we do have uh, Stephen Yanni, and I I don't know who this is the 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 Discord member. Oh, we, we do. Okay, can't identify, but so we do have a couple more people we can talk to. But uh, uh, Miguel, final thoughts, or well, do you want to, or do you want to just keep the volume low for your 
for your daughter there? <laughs> yeah, so I would say like DJ Christian, you know, they look good drivers, you know, good, good fight. I had a couple of nice runs with DJ. Um, I make a couple of mistakes, uh, but, you know, it, for sure it's going to be a, a nice battle today if they keep coming uh, to the races. I hope they keep going, so to keep up the, the good uh, competition going. Great. Well, thanks so much, Miguel and uh, and Michael, and we'll talk to you guys next week. And uh, let's bring in, I guess, Stephen here. Yeah, let's bring in Stephen, and uh, we go ahead and bring in the driver, uh, the nameless driver, and have a little fun with this. Sure. <laughs> so we've got him uh, coming in here now. We've got uh, Stephen hey, Yanni, uh, and yeah, who is our driver without a name? That is what hey. we're we're dying to uh, know here. Yeah, I'm Ernesto Diaz. Uh, I'm new in the league. Okay, so, uh... <laughs> all right. Well, Ernesto, definitely make sure you get an opportunity to uh, to change your display name later. But uh, nice run tonight uh, from you. You and uh, you and Stephen both looks like 17th and 18th uh, uh, together. Were uh, were you guys battling on the track together out there tonight? Well, uh, at the end, uh, I was in front, but the the the. The last uh, like five laps, he was gaining on me and gaining on me, and I said, "Man, I, I, I you know, he's gonna pass me, uh, like soon." And uh, I think there was a a car, like a lap car, that blocked him, like for a few, you know, milliseconds. So uh, he he couldn't catch me, but he was on his way to 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 catch me, man. Yeah, and uh, you'll have to keep me honest on this, Ernesto. By the way, we just did you a solid. Went ahead and changed your name for you uh, on the server. But Thanks. were you in Thank the you. M&M's car, or am I confusing you with Luis Ortiz? Uh, no, I was in the uh, in the Ferrari. I I yeah. I got in like third on the on the AM class. Yeah, and we know. yeah, and uh, right, and yeah, for, for as we as we moved away here, I was. The, the two of your names, I was trying to remember if you were the one in the M&M's car, but you were in the Ferrari. Yeah, you had a yeah. really great run, and, uh, you know, we watched you come into the pits. It looked like, uh, you know, a little bit of a little bit of misfortune for, um, I believe it was John. Uh, he was leading for a little bit, had a solo spin, and then you inherited the lead there for a little while, and uh, we definitely enjoyed following you tonight. It looked like you just had a fantastic drive and some really competitive lap times, too. Yeah, I'm. I'm just uh, stoked, uh, and I give, I want to give you thanks for for the league, and uh, you know I've been having a good time, uh, and uh, you know had good battles on the on the league. So I want to thanks uh, everybody uh, who puts this together, and uh, thanks for the streaming, and uh, you guys are awesome, man. So thank you very much. Well, Absolutely. Well, thank you, Ernesto, for for coming out and supporting us. Yeah, we're thank you guys. Thank you guys. We're glad to have you, and uh, look forward to seeing you out there next week uh, as well. Uh, Ryan, you want to talk to Stephen here for us a little bit, coming off of his win last week and uh, another phenomenal drive tonight. Yeah, Stephen, you're looking good again out there this week. Uh, take us through it. How did it go for you? Oh, we may not. Uh, do we have Stephen? We have him. I'm not sure if he's uh, transmitting here though. Looks like he's muted at the moment. We'll give him a second to try to sort out technical issues. Sometimes that can be a challenge. Uh, but yeah, while we're waiting on Steven, uh, just a phenomenal run on his part. You know, he had the win last week at Twin Ring Motegi, uh, which I did not have the pleasure of watching live. Uh, and then back, you know, to do that and then come and back it up in this in this group with a podium tonight uh, was just phenomenal. So, uh, Steven, we'd love to hear from you if you can hear us. Sounds like uh, maybe having some technical issues. So, unfortunately, we may not get to talk to Stephen tonight. Uh, no worries, though. But, uh, Ryan, another great race. What do we have uh, coming up next time? Uh, next time we have, uh, you know, it's testing my memory here. Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we have next week uh, Road Atlanta, 75-minute race. Oh, wow. Um, okay. February the 1st. So you and I will have to pack a lunch for that one. Um, yeah, so it looks like I've got it here now. We've got Road Atlanta, then uh, Mosport, uh, Road America, which will be fun. So we'll kind of take a little North American tour. Uh, walk, uh, pretty much everything is in North America from here on out. Watkins Glen and then Daytona to finish the season. Uh, yes, sir. Which will be really cool because that'll align with the season opener of the iRacing Team Endurance Series uh, as well. So that's uh, hopefully we'll get a really big turnout there for the season finale because of that. 
it's almost like we planned it that way. Absolutely. Well, uh, as we wrap up here tonight, Ryan, thank you so much for uh, being in here with us and for all the hard work you put into this uh, series, wearing multiple hats. And just want to thank you personally for uh, for being here with us and all that you do for our iRacing and, and the community as a whole. Um, well, just couldn't be happier with your involvement. Oh, thank you, David. And uh, right back at you, of course. Uh, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, David, of course, uh, well, CMS is his baby since 1999. <laughs> yeah, it's we funny. We wouldn't be here without you. It is funny to think how long it's been. I'm definitely getting older and slower every time by the minute, uh, but still having the time of my life and seeing the community and you know, and to be able to have so many so many familiar faces as well as uh, new new faces is just really fun. Well, as we wrap up here, we also just a couple of things to, to shout out on. The fir First and foremost, we want to thank all of the members of Champion Motorsports across all of our disciplines for supporting the community and the league. You all are the ones that make all this happen. Uh, congratulations to everybody tonight that came out and had fun, had the ability to race and supported the league. Uh, huge congratulations to anybody that finished at this uh, challenging track. We definitely want to give a shout out to our series sponsor, SimRace247.com. They do a phenomenal job, Darren and his team over there, putting up recaps for us on these races uh, that our own Tim Collier puts together, and we, we publish those instantly at SimRace247.com. So check them out, bookmark their blog, and support those guys. Just a great, uh, great group of folks, and uh, we're really happy to have them help bring this series. Uh, also, you heard us quickly mention the iRacing Team Endurance Series. This series on Wednesday nights is a sister series to our iRacing Team Endurance Series. Uh, that is going to be a two to three man or two to three driver team, I should say. Uh, endurance series starting up in March. We will have one race every month. We have a tremendous schedule. We've got uh, great sponsors, great prizes, some trophies. That's really sort of the flagship iRacing series here at Champion Motorsports. And we have just a few spots uh, left uh, before you have to get on a waiting list in, uh, in each of the classes. I want to say one in uh, the LMDH class has just recently come open. We've got two or three spots open in GT3 and just a few spots open in LMP2. So if you're running in this series and you're listening to us tonight, be sure to come out. And uh, until next time, Ryan and I will go ahead and say goodnight. And uh, we will see you all at uh, Road Atlanta next week. Uh, take care, guys. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Thanks, David. Good night, everybody.